Hey guys, so like, would you say my red guitar is your favorite or is it the black one? <laughs> to summon you using the dark arts, what three objects would I need to place on the altar? A pair of Adidas trainers would work. Uh, a Man City scarf. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, a plectrum. Mm. That's gonna that's gonna entice me from the other side. Would you rather be able to communicate with people in old photographs or speak to animals? I wouldn't be very interested in the life of a dog or a cat. No dog that I've ever fucking met anyway. So I'm, I'm looking at old photographs. World War II stuff, you could talk. No, John Lennon. Like, all right, mate, fucking hell, nice one. So you wouldn't want to talk to a dolphin? Dolphin? No. Well, well they can't talk. It's just great. Yeah, but you'd be able to talk to it. Well, in their language. Just, it, yeah. You'd better communicate with All it. All right, mate, what have you been up to? Fuck off, what have you been up to? Oh, I'm just on holiday. What's going on in there? Nothing to swim about. Nothing boring. Animals are boring. Have you made more money in the last 10 years yes. from your solo stuff or in the last five years from Oasis stuff? Well, Oasis was a license to print money, so I've made less. Yeah, Oasis is still, uh, is still, it'll never die, thankfully. Um, and it's still a source of great joy to me, particularly as I wrote all the songs. So it never gets old, I'm afraid. If you were a cop and you and your partner found a dead body in a sewer, would you rather have the job of going to tell the dead person's family or handle lugging the body out of the sewer? I'd go and tell the family. That'd be the easiest option, wouldn't it? I want to get covered in shit from a fucking dead person. Yeah, but that's hard, going to tell the family. Is it fuck? What's hard about that? You know what, they're complete strangers, right? Complete strangers, but like, say it's a young father. Hi, right, it's a DC fucking Gallagher. Okay, I forgot. What Could is it? Come What's in. the matter? Uh, you know, your husband has been missing. Yes. Have you found him? What makes you say that? This is suspicious. I'm taking you down the station. No, I just meant, like, have you found him? We've been hoping you'd find him. We found him in a so sewer. Oh, you found him? Yes. Is he all right? He... No, he's dead. He's dead, as well you know. Would you lose all you've achieved in the last 10 years to have your body de-aged 20 years? I don't think I would. I kind of think I feel and look better now than I did 20 years ago. So, no. No, no ask me that in another 10 years and I'd probably say yes. Mm. But not now. I'm peaking. Mm. Now. What's your most spinal tap moment of the last 10 years? Um, we did a gig in Peru in a, on a first solo tour. And uh, we were told we were having a police escort to and from the gig. Uh, it's always a bit of a thrill when you get a police escort. Like, it makes you feel like Led Zeppelin or fucking Stones mm. or something. On the way back from the gig, which was a great gig, as they always are in Peru, uh, we were in the police escort and we got overtaken by a bus. <laughs> which I found very spinal tap, because usually police escorts are like, you fucking get out of the way. Or is it just, we, were just, we were just stuck in the traffic. The yeah. fucking, we weren't even in the bus lane. <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite like, fuck me. Is that Oasis years? No, 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 you said in the last 10 years. I don't yeah. really know this, but I've kind of been solo for the last 10 years. You do know that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. So, I don't think you'd listen to that. Yeah. Oh, no, we used to get loads of uh, police escorts in Oasis, but they were proper ones. Like the, the hairiest one I've ever been in was in uh, Dublin one night with police outriders. They're fucking mental, like, speeding through the streets of Dublin, fucking, it can be quite nerve wracking. You know, you just come off stage, <laughs> you're covered in fucking freezing cold and soaking wet. And then you're going in a car 220 miles an hour up fucking through the streets of Dublin. It's like not yet. What is the thinking behind a police escort? 
Well, if you get you get stopped at the traffic lights, you, you know, get mobbed. Somebody might ask you for your autograph, you know, and fucking hell, that'd be the end of the world, wouldn't it? I've never understood them myself, but um, it's to get you out of the building quick. If you got your dream job movie soundtrack, what's the movie? Uh, it would have to be a Tarantino one, wouldn't it? Like the, there's a track on Who Built the Moon called The Man Who Built the Moon that when I, every day I was going to the studio while writing that track, I passed the promotional poster for The hate, the Hateful Eight. Was it on the called? The Hateful yeah. Eight? Yeah. And uh, I decided to write a song about that poster. Uh, and actually, when it came out, it sounded like it could have been in that film. So it would be one of, one of his, because he's got a certain style and characters are always a bit uh, edgy and yeah. flawed. So it'd be a Tarantino film. Would you be up for doing movie soundtracks? <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I've never been asked to fucking score a single fucking thing in my life ever once. Really? No, no one, no, no one ever asked me. Hit him up. Um, if you could only listen to music from one ten-year window, what would the two years be? Ten? Yeah, so a ten-year window of time. Sixty-seven to seventy-seven. Mm. I think you'd get you'd get Strawberry Fields Forever and all the you know the Stone psychedelic stuff, and then you go through to sixty-nine. Yeah, all the Led Zeppelin and all that, and you finish at punk. I think that's probably one of the best decades of music ever, isn't it? Mm. Or fifty-six to sixty-six. You start with Elvis and finish it. Tomorrow never knows, which would be great. But I think. 67 to 77. Yeah. Yeah. You get Bowie. Uh, you would get, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a fucking, it's a great stuff. decade. Yeah. yeah, you get the glam stuff and you'd, uh, an early kind of, yeah, when you get punk and then you'd, yeah. Okay. What do you do with your old clothes? Um, I, <clears throat> I hoard them all until it just becomes so fucking ridiculous. Like, you know in Seinfeld with George Costanza's wallet? Mm. <laughs> right, that's like one of my fucking wardrobes and they're just all squashed in there and it's just a fucking... Uh... I get on my fucking tit sometimes. I refuse to throw anything away. And then what I usually do is I get to the point where it's so annoying that I just do a fucking John Cleese, right, that's it. And uh, put them all in bin bags and... Uh, call my girl Daisy at the office and say, get rid of these for us. And she gets rid of them to charity shops. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm that, that, well, a big clear out is coming soon. And I don't mean, you know, that kind of clear out. Uh, yeah. What it's, charity shops? Like, why don't you just... I don't know. I don't know. You should put them... What, on eBay? No, it's charity. Like, proper charity, like, so people know. Because think how much they'll make in a charity shop compared to if people knew it used to belong to you. Yeah, you, well, no, I don't, no, I'm not, no, I don't, hey, buy my clothes, no, I'm not, not into that. People would be disgusted at how small I am. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They'd hold up a t-shirt and go, <laughs> really? <laughs> is that how big he is? That <laughs> fucking little wanker. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, but what, what happens as well is I kind of, I'll get to a point where I throw out the stuff that I don't need and the minute it's, the minute it's gone, I'm like, where's that fucking? So we're like classic things, like the Parker you wore for. Oh, they're all gone. I just, I don't, I don't hold on to. I don't, I'm not, I don't really hold on to. I don't get attached to it in that way. I get attached to it like I might need it. Right. But all the, like the stuff that I wore at Nebworth and all, that's long gone. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't hold on to stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's good for the soul. I think it's, it's good to, um, yeah, get rid of it, and start again, you know. Regenerate, baby. Okay. Can you name three high-flying nerds? <sighs> high-flying nerds? In the world? Yeah, well, you know. Okay. Bill Gates? Yeah, that's one. Steve Jobs? Yeah. Some other guy that invented some fucking useless shit that we never needed. Um, I'll take that as a no, then. No, 
What's the difference, if any, of being in a band with all men to being in a band that includes women? Uh, the with girls, the chat's a bit better in the dressing room. Um, they will come up to you and say, oh, I like that top. I always get self-conscious of people say, I like that top. And like, but the other, you know, and sometimes I'll say, you're not going to wear that on stage, are you? I'm like, well, fucking not now. No. Is there anyone in a band currently that you'd be interested in seeing go solo? I think most people who are in bands have gone solo already. Everybody's got a side project, haven't they? But um, how about Bono? I reckon he'd do a good solo record. If you could resurrect one person who died in the last decade, who would it be? What are we now? 21, 2011. It's a toss-up between Prince and Bowie. Mm. And as David Bowie signed off with two pretty fucking good albums, I'm going to say Bowie. Okay.